Malloy, Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Net Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Houston Wilson from the UC Riverside, uh, the Cooperative Extension Specialist, uh, Entomologist. Uh, you got a lot of things in your title, I tell you. Uh, Houston, you do a great job at representing the extension, and and uh, you're doing a lot of research into a new, newly discovered pest of not only almonds but pistachios and and potentially some other. Uh, crops as well here in the Central Valley, Carpophilus beetle. Tell us about it. We got some calls about some strange almond damage uh, back in late August, early September, and and you know we've been aware of Carpophilus beetle uh, as a potential pest of tree nut since the Australians have been dealing with it in their almond orchards for about a decade now. Uh, and you know once we got on the ground to investigate, we found that indeed we had Carpophilus truncatus in an almond orchard in Madera County, and then within a week we had a report of it on pistachios in Kings County. So right off the bat, two calls, two counties. And so we initiated a larger survey of the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, at this point, we've got confirmed uh, IDs of Carpophilus truncatus in Stanislaw County, Merced County, Madera, and Kings. We're still sorting through a ton of beetles that we got from all the other counties. We kind of put out the call. And people started coming left, right, and center to drop off samples at the Kearney Ag Center. Uh, so it already seems like it's fairly widespread. And, you know, some of the samples that we received from Merced County were actually collected in 2022. So it's, it's been here for at least a year. This pest is problematic because it directly attacks the nuts. And it also potentially can facilitate the movement of aspergillus, which leads to the production of aflatoxins and, you know, is, is uh, something we're really concerned about. So what we've done after initiating that first survey was get in touch with our counterparts in Australia and try to get up to speed on, on what they've learned about this thing. And in a way, it's, it's good that they've had it for 10 years because they've been doing all this work on its ecology and monitoring and management and stuff like that. So some of the key points to be aware of is, you know, this insect overwinters in remnant mummy nuts, uh, similar to navel orange worm. And, you know, for that reason, the key to managing this pest is crop sanitation. And that's, that's both good and bad, right? It's good in that, you know, this is something that people know they need to be doing for navel orange worm. It's something we've been hammering away at, especially after a year like this where we had such high navel orange worm damage. And, you know, the, the challenge is, of course, all the usual challenges you have with crop sanitation, not only in almonds, because. but pistachios and... Yeah, the cost, the ability to access your orchard if there's inclement weather, you know, the, the availability of, of equipment and labor and, and, and all of that, you know. And so, you know, we've, we've been putting out some technical, uh, you know, overviews of, of the ecology and phenology of this insect and then also what we know about management and just really driving home this message. You know, if you need another reason to sanitize, like, you got it. Here, here it is. You know, there's no excuse for not sanitizing this year, you know. And, and we've, we've learned, you know, and, and try to emphasize to the growers that uh, how important it is to get those, those mummy nets off of the tree. It's not enough just to get them off the tree. Once they're on the ground, that's even uh, better potentially for Carpophilus beetle to, uh, right. you know, to, to, to get into the nuts and, and have a way to, to eat and, and, and get into the next year, right? Yeah, that's that's one key thing that we've we've picked up from our colleagues in Australia. So, navel orange worm, in contrast, does best in a mummy nut that's in the tree canopy. It's dry, it's kind of isolated up there. Uh, whereas, in contrast, this Carpophilus beetle seem to prefer mummies that are on the ground. So, when we're talking about crop sanitation to control Carpophilus beetle, you got to get the nuts out of the tree. And you got to destroy them. You got to shred them on the ground, you know, and not not just disking them under. Um, you know, there's studies again out of Australia where mummy nuts that were buried as deep as three feet down, the Carpophilus beetle was still able to come out to the soil surface. So, well, we know as a, a beetle species, like like ten line June beetle, for example, those things go deep, you know, and then come back up. So it's like that's that's pretty intense. So the importance, right, is is uh, is, is shredding. Right, those nuts, right? Yeah, you, you really want to make sure that you're destroying those nuts. So, you know, you go in with a flail mower, you may even want to think about making a second pass to make sure that that, that habitat is being destroyed for them. Because not only does it serve as an overwintering uh, host, you know, in the spring when 
both these beetles and navel orangeworm become active, you know, without any new crop nuts yet available, they make use of those mummies again for reproduction in their earlier generations in the year. So it's really critical uh, to, do, to do effective sanitation for controlled Carpophilus beetle. Now, and I understand, um, you know, this is newly discovered, so we don't have the uh, a UC research, for example, to back it up. But, you know, in Australia, as this has been a problem, what can you tell us about, you know, maybe the use of insecticides during the season? Like we have our, our, our plan for, for navel orange room, obviously. You know, is that going to be effective against Carpophilus beetle as well? You know, the use of insecticides for control of Carpophilus beetle is really challenging. It spends most of its life, you know, deep inside the nut and and so coverage is really a big challenge and, and again this has been echoed by our colleagues in Australia uh, what they've seen you know folks primarily trying to utilize pyrethroids uh, like bifenthrin uh, it really has produced mixed results and you know there's been some work to improve spray coverage and even that you know just hasn't hasn't progressed as, as well as they they like and so you know, while we will be exploring chemical control options, you know, we, at this point, sanitation is the key management strategy that's being used in Australia, and that's what we're really trying to push uh, the importance of here in California. Well, we really appreciate your work. I know you and Jolanda Rijal, David Haviland, you guys have been a really key in trying to get as much information on this uh, as possible. I know there's a lot of work for you guys ahead in figuring out what growers can do to get a hold of this. I just have to say this is like the Carpophilus apocalypse of potentially the future here. Uh, naval orange room management, you know, that's just, uh, it was crazy this past year. And, and to think that this beetle could be potentially just as, as detrimental, the growers have enough to worry about. So like anything we can do to get a hold of this uh, again, on top of this pest is appreciated. So thank you. Read more about this in our publications. Again, I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.